Later derivatives of the Mitsubishi Evo and Subaru Impreza would get faster and more powerful. They would become more technologically advanced, and, in every measurable or objective way, they would get better. Right here, though, is where they peaked. Launched within a couple of years of one another in the late 1990s, the Lancer Evo by Tommy Mack and in addition and Impreza 22 Beasts die are, by general consensus, the pinnacles of their respective breeds. They are the apex four-wheel drive rally refugees. They hail from that five-year spell from 1995 to the turn of the century during which Subaru and Mitsubishi dominated the World Rally Championship. The Evo Vitami and Impreza 22 Beasts die capture a moment in time and preserve it in aspic. But is there more to these cars than a cloying, bobble-headed sentimentality? Box fresh examples of both, the best roads in the Peak District and a blessedly dry day in late January are all we need to tell us everything we want to know. First, the history lesson. Early in 1998, Subaru unveiled a limited edition version of the Impreza WRX Sty. Built to celebrate both the Mark's 40th anniversary and its third straight WRC manufacturer's title. The 22 Beast Sty was billed as the production version of Subaru's already iconic two door world rally car. With its swollen wheel arches, the high rise rear spoiler, and an 80 mm increase in width, it was as close to Colin McRae's rally car as any normal punter was ever going to get. It wasn't a homologation special, but more of a road-going replica. In pictures, Colin McRae's career highlights. Between March and August 1998, 422 BS were built for Japan, with just 16 manufactured for the UK and 5 for Australia. The UK cars were modified by Subaru's rally team, Prodriv, with a longer final drive, a miles per hour speedometer and revised headlights. Before Prodriv could get around to registering those 16 cars in the UK, however, more than 50 resourceful Subaru devotees had imported cars from Japan. The 22 in the model's name referred to the engine capacity which was increased from 1,994 cc to 2,212 cc. Officially, the turbocharged flat 4 developed 276 bhp, but the actual figure almost certainly started with a 3. The B, meanwhile, stood for Bilstein, the damper supplier. At least, that's one explanation, whether by locker or judgment, 22B also happens to be the hexadecimal conversion for the number 555, the name of the cigarette brand that had long been Subaru's WRC sponsor. Other upgrades included a twin-plate clutch and 17 inches wheels, up from the standard Impreza WRX size 16 inches ones. The car cost a shade under £40,000 in period, or close to £70,000 in today's money. Little wonder most onlookers thought it a touch on the expensive side. Mitsubishi's retort followed in late 1999. With Finnish driver Tommy Mackinnon having wrapped up a fourth straight WRC driver's title, Mitsubishi launched a limited edition Evo Vi to celebrate. Over a standard Evo Vi it got a lighter and faster responding titanium turbo compressor, a lower ride height, a front strut brace and quicker steering. Many of the key components came from top-line suppliers, such as the Momo steering wheel, NK wheels, Brembo brakes and Recaro seats embossed with Mackinnon's name. Mitsubishi Lancer Evo Vi, used car buying guide. Over the two years the TME was on sale, more than 3,000 were built making it much more common than the 22B. Perhaps that's why you'll pay twice as much like for like for the Subaru today a low might mileage 22B will fetch six figures in the current market at £31.000 new, the TME was more affordable than the Gold Dust Impreza 2, and whereas the 22B was available in Sonic Blue or not at all, the Mackinnon was offered in white, blue, black, silver, or, as here, in red with rally inspired diesels. Officially, 250 came to the UK. On a bitterly cold Tuesday morning, long before sunrise, 
the Evo's engine fires to a noisy busy idle. With the fluid in the dampers moving around like cement in a mixer at this chilly pre-dawn hour, the low-speed ride is tough and unyielding. The whole car drops heavily at one corner, and then the next as you thud through potholes and over sunken drain covers, the entire structure rattling in protest. With some warmth in the fluid, the ride does settle, but the real change comes with speed. Beyond 50 miles per hour or so, the car starts to plane and seems to levitate half an inch above the road. Rather than crashing and banging across the surface, it glides, all of a sudden becoming so wonderfully pliant and forgiving that you'd swear the suspension had been replaced wholesale somewhere between third and fourth gear. Over a bucking, rollicking moorland road, the impression you get is of the body staying calm, encompassed as the suspension underneath works frantically to allow the wheels to rise quickly and fall in an instant, suspension arms nothing less than a blur. Unnatural features in the road surface do shunt their way through to the body, but all of the natural shape and texture that you get in a road by laying tarmac over a soggy moor is dealt with masterfully. You wouldn't need to read the TME sales brochure to know its suspension had been tuned for a tarmac rally stage. When the road spears across the hillside, rather than twisting and turning over it, and you get into fourth and fifth gears, the Evo feels edgy. The chassis has such a hyper-agility about it that you constantly nudge the steering wheel this way and that just to keep it in a straight line. The car is so desperate to turn into corners that it tries to do so, even where there isn't one. It means that the TME will carry huge speed into a bend before it starts to push on. Snapping into direction changes like a terrier chasing sense. The limit of front end grip is so well telegraphed that you hang the car right on the edge of understeer corner after corner. And although the steering does have a strange springiness to its right around the straight ahead, it actually becomes brilliantly crisp and detailed with a few more degrees of lock. On dry peak district roads, you'd never know much was going on in the rear differential. On a wet or low grip surface, you'd feel the act of your control shuffling torque here and there, but today it just seems as though the car has infinite drive and traction. The gear shift couldn't be better, and with five very tightly stacked ratios you bang through them like many Pacquiao throwing combinations. The car feels punchy on a wide open throttle. Nothing much happens until 3000 rpm, but from there the motor rips around to 7000 rpm with a free revving energy. There's no doubt about it, the Tommy Mackinnon edition is a very special car. Parked alongside the Impreza, though, it looks less exotic. The two-door Impreza shape will always be so evocative, even more so with the 22 BS pumped-up arches. The Subaru has the much better seating position too, you sit lower, with the steering wheel presented to you within closer reach and at a more natural angle. The seats, meanwhile, wrap around your sides like a bear hug. You instantly feel connected to the car. Like the Evo it rides stiffly at low and medium speeds, perhaps a little less so, but it too is transformed at around 50 miles per hour to become brilliantly effluid and compassed. There's none of that straight-ahead steering stiction that troubles the TME. In fact, the 22B steers beautifully. It's quicker rack, there's a small sticker at the base of the rear window that reads quick steering, is perfectly suited to the rest of the chassis. Which means you place the car with precision at every turn. Whereas the Mitsubishi lives on its front end, the Subaru always feels more neutral. Turn into a corner and it instantly works both axles, leaving you suspended sweetly between them. It's an addictive sensation and I don't think I'd ever get bored with adjusting the center differential torque split using the dial and the centric console. With 10% more displacement, the 22 BS engine instantly feels more muscular than the Evos. In fact, the mid-range is almost unnervingly strong, flinging the car up the road as though it's been shot from a cannon. With the red line set at 7,900 rpm, the Impreza's engine keeps on spinning willingly at the point where the Evos is crashing into its limiter. Subarus claim that this car had 276 bhp in period is a colossal fib.
buy a cigarette paper I prefer the Subaru, but that might be a legacy of having been a McRae and Richard Burns fan rather than a Mackinnon supporter back in the day. Objectively, there's little between them. And while that nostalgic rally connection is undoubtedly a large part of the appeal of these cars, it isn't the whole story. What's more significant still is that the Tommy Mackinnon edition and 22 Beast Style really are the Mitsubishi Evo and Subaru Impreza at their very best. First, Impreza 22B brilliant steering and chassis balance combined with a great turbo engine to devastating effect. Second, Evo TME, incredible agility, a characterful engine and pliant suspension make the TME the best Evo ever. A Subaru enthusiast's view. Adrian Spencer, owner of the Immaculate Impreza 22 Beast I used in our test, is the founder of Subaru Specialist Edge Speed. The company, based near Manchester, was established primarily to run Spencer's own ex better Soberg Impreza World Rally car, but he says, as a business, it needed to make money, so we also build and prepare rally cars for other competitors, as well as servicing and tuning road cars. The Subaru tuning scene is still fairly active. It's been stable over the past 10 years. The older Imprezas are quite cheap now, so we do see lots of cars that have been messed about with. People try to modify them without really knowing what they're doing. We do lots of remapping, as well as engine rebuilds, fitting bigger turbos and so on. In recent years, prices have started to pick up. And as the cars get older I think people will want to keep them in original specification. If you want to hold onto an Impreza for it to become a classic, it needs to be standard. I've seen people spend £30,000 tuning P1s, for example, and they're worth less than an immaculate standard car would be. Dot Subaru Impreza buying tips. Click here for used Subaru Impreza WRX. Whichever potent Impreza you're considering, Make sure it has been properly looked after. They all require regular servicing, with oil changes every 6,000 miles or so. Transmission and differential oil should be changed every 25,000 miles, while the Campbell should be swapped after 45,000 miles. The turbo should always have been allowed to warm up and cool down gradually, so ask the seller what his or her driving habits are. The clutch. Meanwhile, can wear out in as little as 40,000 miles. Click here for used Mitsubishi Evo this. 5 Imprezas to buy for every budget. Turbo 2019-96, now known as the classic Impreza, the mid-1990s Turbo 2000 is the cheapest way into fast Impreza ownership. With more than 200 bhp from its flat 4 and 4-wheel drive, it still feels rapid today. What to pay? £2,000 P1 2001. After the legendary 22B, the P1 is the most sought after high performance impress of derivative. Like the 22B, it also has a two door body shell, but it uses a 2.0 rather than 2.2 liter engine. What to pay? £18,000. WRX 2006, the second generation Impreza looks fresher than the classic version and isn't much more expensive. Even the later Hawkeye model, which is the best looking of the lot, is very affordable. What to pay? £5,000. WRX Style 2007, with 276 bhp, the WRX Style model is more in keeping with the image of a high performance Impreza. There's a very good selection of well cared for cars at this price point too. What to pay? £10,000. WRX Style 2.5 2016, the most recent WRX DIS, which dropped the Impreza name, may not be as revered as some earlier versions, but they are more powerful and easier to live with on a day to day basis. What to pay? £20,000. 